recurring nightmares, manipulative mommies, and a dad who's a real d Bo is afraid isn't necessarily meant to make sense, but let's try to untangle what happened. Major spoilers ahead. With all the surreal things that happen in Bo is Afraid, it's easy to go down a rabbit hole of wondering what's real and what isn't. If you get too hung up on the details, you'll just end up with a headache. As far as Bo is concerned, everything in the movie happens for real. And Bo's perspective is the only one that matters, because the movie is supposed to immerse the viewer completely in Bo's mind. I want to put you in the experience of being a loser. <laughs> Director Ari Aster told The Daily Beast, Bo's world is meant to be a clown mirror of the real world that is awful in all the same ways that our world is awful, but the dial is turned up. Bo lives in constant fear that the worst is going to happen. So in Bo's world, the worst actually does happen, every time without fail. Of course, it's not an accurate representation of reality, but it's something more profound. A glimpse into the headspace of somebody with overwhelming anxiety and serious mommy issues. As one would expect in a movie titled Bo is Afraid, Bo has countless fears, ranging from irrational phobias to legitimate reasons to be terrified. But one fear looms larger than all of them. What Bo fears most is disappointing his mother, Mona Wasserman. Although she doesn't appear in person until the ending, Mona casts a shadow over the entire film. Her supposed death is what kicks her story in motion, and as Bo journeys to attend her funeral, he is constantly worrying about what his mother would want him to do. Later, Bo discovers that Mona isn't dead. Instead, she faked her death to see how her son would react. Mona is convinced that Bo didn't try hard enough to reach the funeral, which only confirms her belief that Bo never loved her. What do you think I should do? I'm sure you'll do the right thing, sweetheart. Mona tries to control every aspect of Bo's life, even his thoughts. At the end of the movie, Mona lists everything she feels Bo has done wrong with his life, even though none of these were Bo's faults. This, of course, is Bo's worst fear come true. As Bo watches a play unfold on stage, he imagines himself as the star of the play. Through the play, Bo envisions a fairy tale version of his life, the kind of life he wishes he had. Bo builds his own home, falls in love, and has three children. Even though this imagined Bo's life is challenging, it is still more fulfilling than Bo's real life. At least the Bo in the play has a life filled with purpose. This is a good home. I know. At the end of the play, Bo is reunited with his children. At this moment, the real Bo realizes that his fantasy can never become reality. Whenever one of Bo's sons asks him what happened to their mother, Bo cannot answer. He knows it's impossible for him to ever start a family. For Bo, this is a cruel reminder that even in his imagination, happiness will forever be out of reach. The play demonstrates that Bo has missed the opportunity to live a fulfilling life because he is living in constant fear of what might happen if he falls in love. Alternatively, if Bo is indeed cursed, then this moment proves that Bo never had a chance. He was always doomed to live a lonely life. Roger and Grace take Bo under their wing after they accidentally hit him with their car. Although they have an empty bedroom, they make their daughter Tony share her room with Bo, because the empty bedroom once belonged to their son Nathan before he died in combat. Roger and Grace worship Nathan. They would rather ask Tony to sleep on the couch than disturb their shrine to Nathan. The whole situation is absurd, but there's a grain of truth to it. Although Roger and Grace's reactions are exaggerated, they still reflect the way that some people prioritize honoring the dead over taking care of the living. This plot thread mirrors Bo's relationship with his mother. Bo mourns the loss of his mother as much as any person would, but Dr. Cohen accuses Bo of delaying the funeral and disregarding his mother's final wishes. No matter that Bo would have gladly come to the funeral if he hadn't been recovering from an accident. This is yet another way that Bo is emotionally manipulated by those around him. The theme of guilt hangs over the entire movie. Time and time again, Bo blames himself for things that are not his fault or beyond his control. He feels guilty because he has delayed the funeral and because Tony's parents love him more than they love her own daughter. During the play, he is imprisoned for a crime he didn't commit, and he briefly wonders if it actually was his fault. Naturally, Bo is being conditioned to think this way by his mother. In Bo's recurring nightmare, Mona responds to her son's questions about his father by asking, are you trying to hurt me? If this is any indicator of Bo's childhood, then his mother was constantly accusing him of hurting her. Bo must have been blamed so many times as a child that he internalized it, and now he blames himself for everything, without even needing to be told by anyone. At the beginning of Bo is Afraid, Bo tries to tell his therapist about a recurring dream. Later in the movie, viewers get to see Bo's dream, which Mona tells him is actually a memory. In it, there are two versions of Bo. One is Bo as a young boy, 
refusing to get in the bath until his mother tells him what happened to his father. Another beau is behind the camera, submissively waiting in the bathtub and watching silently. When Mona banishes the other bow to the attic, this symbolizes her crushing bow's spirit. She is stomping out bow's spark of independence and locking that side of his personality away, so that bow will remain completely dependent on her. Judging by the movie's conclusion, Mona has probably succeeded. Hi, you've reached Mona. Leave me a message if you ever want to speak to me again. It's hard to tell exactly what happened to Bo's father because the movie offers three conflicting explanations. At first, Mona tells Bo that his father died the instant Bo was conceived, because his father had the same genetic condition that Bo has. Later in the film, a man approaches Bo after the play and says that his father is alive. Bo even begins to wonder if this man is actually his father. Strangest of all is what Bo discovers in the attic from his nightmare, a giant penis with a face, which Mona tells him is his real father. For good reason, viewers will be thoroughly confused. Some viewers have suggested that Bo's father is portrayed this way because his identity is irrelevant. He just impregnated Mona and walked out of her life. Others have argued that it all represents Bo's sexuality, which he he has locked away, just like his alternate self was locked away. Bo was brought up to believe that he has a genetic condition that will kill him instantly if he has sex. Bo's fear of this comes to a figurative and literal climax after he reconnects with his childhood crush Elaine and gets into bed with her. But to his utter surprise, Bo survives. This moment embodies a larger epiphany for Bo, as he discovers what it's like to make decisions for himself, free from his mother's influence. It's exhilarating, but alas, it's too good to last. Elaine has died instead, seemingly from the same condition that killed Bo's father. Does someone actually have to die if Bo has sex? Most likely, Bo's encounter was harmless, but Bo's mother has scarred him so deeply that he believes something horrible will happen if he disobeys her. Bo fears it might be true, so naturally that makes it true for him. Watching Bo is Afraid audiences may be reminded of The Truman Show. Both movies ultimately reveal that the protagonist's loved ones are all involved in a conspiracy, and it turns out that a parental figure with godlike abilities is the one pulling all the strings. In The Truman Show, it's Kristoff. In Bo, it's Mona. At the end of Bo is Afraid, Mona reveals that Bo's therapist worked for her all along, secretly recording all his therapy sessions with Bo. In retrospect, that explains why the therapist was so preoccupied with telling Bo that it was okay to say bad things about his mother to trick him. Do you ever wish that she was dead? What? But Grace and Roger in on it too? After all, the couple has surveillance cameras constantly pointed at Bo, and Roger's excuse for why he can't drive Bo to his mother's house seems awfully convenient. Of course, since Grace is the one who tells Bo where to find the camera footage, it's possible she could have gotten cold feet. The biggest question mark is Elaine. It's unclear if Elaine's sudden death was all part of Mona's plan or something Mona simply capitalized on after it happened. After Bo discovers that Grace and Roger were spying on him, Tony tells him, you failed your stupid test. Tony never elaborates on this, but it's possible she means that Mona's funeral was a test of Bo's dedication to his mother, and Bo failed because he didn't beg hard enough for Tony's parents to take him in. In fact, everything that happens in the film could be seen as a test of Bo's loyalty. Apparently, Mona has been watching Bo the whole time, waiting for him to screw up. If it is a test, then Bo was set up to fail. Nowhere is this more apparent than when Dr. Cohen and Mona humiliate Bo in a dramatic trial that is clearly stacked against him. All this points to the possible theory that Bo's entire universe was created by Mona to test her son. After all, Mona Wasserman's hometown of Wasserton is clearly named after her, which suggests that the entire world revolves around her. The photos on Mona's walls, which show Bo posing in advertisements for his mother's business, hint at the possibility that Bo's memories of his childhood could be no more real than these advertisements and her company logo appears everywhere in Bo's life. Or perhaps Bo's world is a metaphor for his mother's suffocating presence. Bo's trial ends when his boat explodes, presumably killing him. Although Bo's death seems random and pointless, there might actually be a method to this madness. One possible interpretation is that the explosion demonstrates Mona's total control over Bo's life. She brought him into this world, and she can take him right back out. So she does exactly that, though she seems to immediately regret it because viewers can hear her distant sobbing. Or maybe Bo did successfully kill his mother, and the trial exists only in his head as a manifestation of his guilt. Perhaps the explosion is Bo punishing himself for Mona's murder. Alternatively, there's another way to read the ending of Bo is Afraid. Perhaps Bo allows himself to die because he knows it's the only way he can break free of his mother's control. While Mona clearly enjoys tormenting Bo, she doesn't seem to want him dead, as suggested by her crying in the end. 
Once again, viewers may be reminded of a scene from The Truman Show, where Truman ties himself to a boat in the middle of a storm and then dares Kristoff to kill him. Although Bo's life is in his mother's hands, perhaps he will get the final laugh, because now he has figured out exactly how to hurt her.